Hi friends! Today we are going to start talking about the four major strategies that we use to try to accomplish our goals in economic development. And so these four, uh, we call them industrial recruitment, which is bringing in the large projects that have uh, the, the big investments and the large amounts of new jobs at one time um, into the community. The second is something we call business retention and expansion, which is our work with our already existing businesses to make sure they stay healthy and can grow and create new jobs when they're already here. The third is entrepreneurship, which is working with people here locally that want to start new small businesses. And the fourth is what we call community development, which is ways to increase the quality of life in the area that help us better achieve the other three goals or strategies. Um, today we're going to focus on industrial recruitment. Like I said, this is the thing that I think economic development is most known for. So this is the one that's on the front of the newspapers, it's when the press is here and you have the big announcement, X number of jobs coming into the community. Um, we love these projects because they do bring in that big investment at one time. However, this is also the thing that um, is the most rare and is the most competitive. Um, there are thousands and thousands of counties in the United States, and not even counting projects abroad, that are all competing for the same small batch of projects. So we have to be very prepared and take steps to make sure that we have sites available and can compete for these projects. Um, the way that this process tends to start is with a site. So you, you have to have something to show in order to recruit these major projects. Um, once we have something to show, we have organizations like the Cabinet for Economic Development, who we work very closely with, who projects come into them, they look at their list of sites and their contacts and they say, okay, what site's gonna work for this project? And then they help connect us with those projects based on what we have available here in terms of sites. Um, companies are looking for sites that they can quickly build on and can be quickly operational because the faster they can get started, the more quickly they can begin making money. So we call that critical factor speed to market. Our role as an economic development organization is to prepare the sites and then market them to prospective companies. In order for us to have a site that can offer that speed to market, there's a couple things that we need to do on our end to make sure those sites are prepared. So our first step to getting a site um, prepared for a potential project is for the site to actually be owned by a public entity, so either the government or an economic development organization like Breck United. Most companies want to work with a publicly owned site because that offers them more security in their, in their investment than in working with a, with a privately owned site. So it's pretty important for either a government entity or a, a quasi-government entity, something along those lines, to own or to have a some sort of um, option on the property before the cabinet or other entities we work with will show the site. Um, following that ownership piece, most companies are looking for um, basic utility infrastructure to already be on site. And so that is a basic infrastructure for water, sewer, natural gas, electricity, and telecommunications, which at this point is fiber. Um, when a company or a consultant is looking at a site, they are looking for reasons to eliminate your site from contention because they're probably looking at dozens and dozens of potential industrial sites. So if they're going to the list and they say, okay, this site is publicly owned and they have water, sewer, electricity, fiber, but no natural gas, X, that site is no longer in contention if they have any other sites that have all of those characteristics. Not having one of those pieces is one of the quickest ways to get a site eliminated from contention. So us not only owning a site, but then investing in that infrastructure is, um, is critical. And that's one of the reasons that industrial recruitment is, um, while it is the most, I guess, notable portion of economic development, it's also the most expensive and the most difficult to accomplish because it requires a ton of upfront investment to get a site prepared enough and to the level that a potential company wants uh, to come and look at it and move on to that site. Other than the ownership and the utilities, there are other issues, of course, that, that companies find attractive. Transportation and accessibility is probably the next biggest one um, that you have that ready access in whatever way is best suited for the company. So for some it is um, roads and it is traffic. Um, for some it is rail. 
or some it is the river. We had try to keep sites that meet any of those needs for that reason. We tend to focus on ones that have the utility infrastructure first because more sites, more projects are interested in um, those basic infrastructure pieces than in sort of your special assets like the rail infrastructure or having the river access. A good example of these um, characteristics of a site can be seen in the project that we are looking at in Irvington. And we were actually drawn to that property because we have those five utility pieces that we've discussed within a certain amount of feet of that site. So that's an investment that we know that as a community um, is, is doable for us. It's still an investment, but it is an accessible one. And that site also has access both to Highway 60 and to the rail. And so it has those two critical pieces um, for transportation that make that a more valuable site. So that site is not completely finished. It doesn't have everything we want for that speed to market quality, but it's in a good position for us to make some minor investments, minor for economic development, and have that site uh, ready and competitive in the eyes of projects and consultants and site selectors. So that's kind of a, a broad description of industrial recruitment and how that process works and, um, and what our role is in that process. So next time when we come back, we'll be talking more about business retention and expansion, which focuses on businesses that are already here in the community. Thank you guys for watching.